as you just heard my title, Bill Jones on High Inflation Numbers. I'm really, what I'm going to talk about is the economy, U.S. economy, uh, for the big picture and maybe get back to gold towards the end of the speech. So, the best way to understand the big picture as far as where the U.S. economy is, the really big picture, you have to go back maybe 40 or 50 years to the 70s when, forgive me Mark, I'm going to use broad numbers, I might be a little off, but I'm pretty close. <laughs> if you go back 40 or 50 years ago, I think the U.S. generated about 50% of the world's consumption and as far as the whole economy, was, the U.S. was about 50%. Today, because uh, countries like China, which was hardly anything 30 years ago, now it's the second largest country today, the U.S.'s output is about 25%. Now we have China, the second largest economy, uh, countries like Brazil, Africa, Korea, so many other countries growing like they weren't growing 50 years ago. Now another part of the speech is that for the past 40 or 50 years, the U.S., we've been lucky. Because of the dollar standard, we're pretty much allowed to borrow as much money as we want, and there's not too many repercussions because we're the world's reserve currency. Now, all this has worked pretty well. Now, another thing for my backdrop to understand what's going on today is look at 2008, which I mentioned before, the 2008 crisis, Does everyone mentioned that, when the U.S. economy went into a major tailspin. So what the Federal Reserve did to get the U.S. economy moving again, they dropped the interest rates, remember, to zero. They also did the technical thing called quantitative easing, $4 trillion. They kind of, some would call it printing money. They bought bonds and this and that, $4 trillion worth from banks and other institutions, and this also kept interest rates low. So two, since 2008, the Federal Reserve, they kind of generated an artificial recovery, right? Things seem to get better. Everyone, their friends or what have you, everyone seemed to get a job. So the economy seemed to get better, which brings us to today. If you ask most people, they'd say the economy is good. But underlying uh, the economy and a lot of these things that people aren't, most, at your average person is not taking into account are related to some of the things I've just mentioned and a few other things. Some of the other things to look at, as I'm sure a lot of you know, we hear from time to time, the U.S., the federal debt, all the money the U.S. owes is $20 trillion. I think now it takes up 7% of our budget. It's just a number, it doesn't really mean anything. Another big number is next year, just for 2019, the federal deficit will be about $1 trillion, right? Now, as I said before, because the U.S. is the world's reserve currency, as long as money is cheap, the U.S. can borrow money cheaply. If Mark can borrow money cheaply to buy a house at 3 or 4%, everything is okay. When my father bought a house in the 70s or early 80s, interest rate was 9%. Imagine if interest rate for buying for a 30-year mortgage was 9%. What, what would that do to the real estate market? Maggie, if it was at 9%. It would slow things down. Just a bit, right? Mm -hmm. Just a bit. So if you take all these things into consideration, you can see there's some maybe some underlying problems in the economy today that we don't really see at the moment. Now, just for example, we'll talk about the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar in the past few months has been dropping rapidly, maybe 10%. And people say, well, maybe it's good because uh, it lets uh, overseas corporations sell their profits, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't really affect it. But the fact is, as I said before, because the U.S. has been allowed to borrow money, we've been able to get away with a lot of problems. But what if the U.S. dollar, dollar keeps dropping? What if it drops another 30%. Now, another reason why the U.S. dollar has been drop, dropping, one of the reasons, um, is because of the latest U.S. tax cuts. I believe right after the U.S. signed the tax cut into law, which is going to create these large deficits for next year, $1 trillion, I think recently, but just a few days after that, China came out with a statement saying, well, we might not buy U.S. bonds anymore, and the dollar started falling. So as I said, if the U.S. has $20 trillion in total debt, 
maybe China owns a few trillion dollars, Japan a trillion, and some other countries a trillion. But the problem is the dollar falls and it also pushes up the, the bond rates, our borrowing costs. Like the 10, I don't want to throw too many numbers, but the 10 year bond in the past few weeks has gone from 2.5 to 2.9%. So, although things appear well, at the same time, just for today, a report came out that inflation was rising, right? Now, the goals of the Federal Reserve, as I said, they've had rates at zero. They've been slowly trying to raise rates to get back to normal. They've raised them maybe a full point, a point and a half in the past years, and they'd like to get back to, say, three, four, five percent. But one might say, well, if the economy is not good or slows down, why do we have to raise rates? The problem with having rates at zero for so long is it causes all sorts of bubbles and causes a lot of bad investment. You see the stock market. Last year, it was going up almost every day. Is anyone watching that? The stock market never went down until after a while people had enough and it drops 2,000 points in a day. Many people think the stock market has been going up because interest rates are low. Zero percent, people can borrow money, you can buy stocks. What about in downtown Chicago? Who has noticed in the past five years the number of new high-rises downtown? Yeah. It's yeah. a ton, ton of high-rises, right? Now many people would say, well, young people are moving to the cities, technology is causing people to congregate in the cities, and some of the high-rises are needed, but at the same time, what's really needed to fill these high-rises, right, is we need to keep growing the economy faster, right? If the economy slows down at all, these high-rises will be empty. Which brings us back to the Federal Reserve. As I said, the Federal Reserve, they want to raise rates because they know there's possibly a real estate bubble, possibly a stock market bubble. But at the same time, and also, inflation numbers are getting higher, as I mentioned. You see the higher inflation numbers, they know rates are artificially too low, but they also know if they raise rates too much, the economy will slow. So many people think Federal Reserve will have to keep rates low, which will cause higher inflation over time, but we're just going to have to deal with it. Because there's no other way than, the only way the U.S. can ever get out of the box it's in is to grow itself out of its problem, right? make the economy bigger, maybe pay down the debt, but it's impossible to grow if rates aren't low, right? So understanding all that, going back to my title, the reason why gold jumped today is because gold generally does well with inflation and it also does well when there's a falling dollar. Now I've done many speeches on gold and it's generally not an investment your average guy has, but I think in times like this, gold just might be a good investment. As far as the economy, we have 2008, 10 years ago, and I'm sure there'll be another crisis maybe next year, maybe this year, Maggie, maybe in two years, but you'll still be happy. But let's face it, there's always a crisis. Yeah. But just because there's a crisis doesn't mean it's in the world. Generally, there's a crisis, and then we get through it. But the key is, it would always be a good idea to have gold as an insurance policy to get back to my title. You see with the stock market falling 2,000 points, 2,000 may crash. Gold acts as an insurance policy because it always holds its value and it acts as a counterbalance to many of these other types of financial investments. So in closing, I know I've talked about a lot of different things, but I guess the one thing I want to say is you always have to look at just when everything appears to be going well, generally that's when stuff can go wrong. And it's always wise to have a little insurance, and maybe you should consider gold. Thank you.